Hello, I'm Bob Mankoff, cartoon editor of The New Yorker magazine, and welcome to a relaxing episode of The Cartoon Lounge. I'm having a lot of fun here, but you know I'm a history buff, and uh, so buff me up on this game we're playing. This game is called uh, mini golf, or miniature golf, which derives from its parent sport, uh, golf, which is also known as maxi golf or, or big golf. It was first called Golfsticle in the June 8th, 1912 edition of the London Illustrated Papers, and uh, since then people have been amusing themselves with it. Oh, sh**. <laughs> Damn it. The hell with it. <laughs> the hidden side of golf, defense. Okay, we need some advice. I would say uh, aim, aim for the hole. Aim for the hole. Okay, but what club? I would recommend the putter. The putter. Um, not that putter, uh, this putter. Ah! Oh. <laughs> Too good. Congratulations. Well, it was a lot of fun playing miniature golf, but of course the real game is golf, and the New Yorker certainly uh, has paid a lot of attention to that in its cartoons. It has over 450 golf cartoons. You can get them right here in this book. But I was thinking, okay, does it have any cartoons about miniature golf? and it has a very small subset of cartoons that could even be considered that. One of them is uh, obviously based on miniature golf. It's Roz Trask cartoon from 1980 called The Miniature Sports, Miniature Tennis, Tiny Little Racket, Tiny Little Net, Miniature Baseball, uh, and Miniature Swimming. See, Miniature Swimming is a little bit interesting because as I remember as a kid growing up, you had to wait three hours after, before you went in the pool, miniature swimming, only three minutes. See, I did find one cartoon dressed on miniature golf, which is a rather nice one from Bill Woodman from 1993. We didn't say on our miniature golf course any windmills, but you know, that's what they're known for, a windmill and you had to hit it through the hole. So here, absolutely appropriately, is Don Quixote tilting at a windmill with a miniature golf club. And right behind him, his loyal assistant, his Colin, Sancho Ponce. Today's question comes from Naomi Bradshaw. Dear Bob, as an editor, do you find you must tweak submissions before they are ready to print, either by correcting drawing errors or caption errors and do cartoonists allow that? Or is it that you simply reject any cartoon that you consider less than perfect? Well, first of all, the cartoonists absolutely do allow it because as I've said, I think before, the difference between amateurs and professionals, amateurs really love what they do and professionals are always dissatisfied. And they expect me to be dissatisfied because we actually want to move towards perfection. It doesn't always start there because cartoons just come in as, uh, as rough drawings. We know it's never going to be perfect. The best is the enemy of the good and the perfect is, you know, even worse, but we keep both of us working together to try to make the captions better. And I hope you appreciate the enormous effort that we take to do that.